No T-Rex today. Too bad. New door. Never been out this door. What time is it? Oh, boy. It's time for Tim's brain to be fried. It was a 47-hour weekend. 14 hours from Massachusetts to California, door to door. Uh, but at least it's a nice-looking door. We get, uh, yeah, nothing like a swimming pool at 6,300 feet above sea level here. <laughs> you know where we are? Look at that. That's amazing. Yeah, Truckee, California, where we got here late yesterday, and it had been raining and snowing a little bit, and it really hasn't stopped. I do not have a good view of the mountain, but there is a mountain full of ski lifts up there. This is North Star, California. The summit's at about 8,000 feet, and we have another storm incoming here on the West Coast, and the snow level, I don't know. It's snowing right this second, but it's been going back and forth, so we may end up with another foot and a half, two feet of snow today and tomorrow. But the liquid equivalent on this storm coming into California is three to five inches. Talk about some fried brain cells here, trying to figure out the weather here and at home. Uh, we ended our streak. What is that, a magpie? Hear that bird? Uh, we ended our streak of 20 days in a row of snow. Yesterday, my travel day, I took off with blue sky, chasing the moon across the nation. I'll leave you with a few sights of that, yeah, that flight across the storm. Uh, the storm that was a blizzard in North Dakota three or four days ago is now kind of fading over western New York and Ontario. A new storm is forming east of Cape Hatteras, and that new storm and the old storm are going to merge into a storm not as bad as it looked a few days ago because, why is it not as bad? Because it looks like it's still going to try and loop, but the loop, instead of being south, of Massachusetts is now going to be east of Massachusetts. That changes a lot of things. Uh, so instead of having a strong wind from the east and northeast, you're gonna have more of a wind from the north and even northwest inland. Uh, so that's gonna mean probably a colder storm with snowfall amounts greater than what they might have been. And it also means real tough forecast at the coast. Thankfully, we're looking at uh, uh, between tide moons tomorrow uh, almost an eye-like feature to this storm east of Cape Cod, but that's better than south of Cape Cod, uh, depending. Uh, those of you with oysters out in the flats on the north side of Cape Cod would much rather see wind from the east than the northeast. But anyhow, the wind is going to be from the east there on Cape Cod, perhaps gusting past 65 or 70 miles per hour midday tomorrow. And in Boston, probably about 40 or 50 mile an hour gusts from the east, but then it's gonna come around from the north and northeast and the rain's gonna go right over to snow midday tomorrow in eastern Massachusetts. And some of the guidance, the coldest air in parts of New England is in southern, eastern, southeastern New England tomorrow afternoon. So it's really gonna be a play by play on what this storm ends up doing, especially in southern New England. Now, higher elevations in uh, western New England and northern New England is pretty easy to say 10 to 15 inches of snow. So say, uh, some place like oh, Crotchet Mountain comes in with uh, 15 inches of snow, which is a reasonable estimate. And you only get 10 inches of snow in Boston. Well, that 10 inches of snow in Boston, which I think is a reasonable estimate, will weigh more than 15 inches at Crotchet because the density of the snow is going to be rain to begin with and it's going to change to snow. Temperature may stay at about 33. And with the temperature and a dew point near 33 and the wind gusting past 33, power outages are probably going to be the biggest story from the snowstorm and very challenging to move. I, we're not going to match that April Fool's blizzard. Uh, we're not going to match, I don't think, the, the blizzard we had last January uh, in terms of wind and ferocity. But we may, you know, it would be easy to eclipse any other snowstorm we've had so far this season. So I don't believe it's a worst case scenario anymore. Thanks to that looping now that's going to be more east of New England than south of New England. Uh, it's not really bombogenesis. The low is going to go from about 1,004 off Cape Hatteras today to about probably 975. Now that's still really low, uh, but that's not the 971 uh, forecast uh, from a few days ago. But uh, still a very formidable storm. Powerhouse nor'easter, really the third nor'easter this month. We had uh, one that first Saturday of March, and then the one that missed us on Saturday was also kind of a nor'easter, wayward nor'easter. That's out in the middle of the ocean right now, cranking. Look at the ocean map. 30-foot seas all over the place out there. Uh, even Stellwagen buoy. Before this storm got here, we were at 9 feet 11 seconds, and the forecast is for seas to build to 20 to 25 feet just off Cape Cod. 
Uh, so even though the storm's out to sea, we're still gonna have a lot of coastal erosion. And uh, I think that worst of the storm probably at low tide. And what about those outer bands of snow, those deformation bands? I talked about how they cut off low. Uh, let's take uh, Wednesday, for example. I, I, I chose this because you can see the, the number 534 there in northern Maine. Uh, that's a cutoff isopleth a line of equal pressure up at 500 millibars, about 12,000 feet in the sky. And I think that the snow bands are going to reach to that 534 line where it's still going to be snowing in parts of western and northern New England on Wednesday while most of us are drying out. So that's a real wild card too. So a uh, real fascinating and I got storms to cover here on both coasts. And this snow cover here is kind of alarming. And this is lower elevation and it's saturated with water now. So we're expecting three to five inches of liquid equivalent here on the west coast. So we're gonna have plenty of action to cover here. I don't know if I've touched on it all. I, like I said, my brain cells are kind of fried with that long fly day yesterday and the change in the clocks and so much weather going on. I'm gonna try and focus as much as I can. I'll leave you with some of the, the highlights of the trip across the ocean, across the nation yesterday from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean and some pretty close encounters with other jet planes. I guess it's common, but I'm not a pilot, so I don't know, but it was <laughs> eye-opening to say the least. Anyhow, hoping to get up to uh, 8,000 feet here this morning and we'll have plenty more updates as uh, the storms evolve on both, both coasts. Oh yeah, get a little of that today too. We are at 36,000 feet over Utah, which is crossing into Nevada. So these cloud tops, probably about 35,000 feet. What's this storm gonna do when it gets to the east coast? This us to the south next weekend? Or is this next weekend storm? It's always a little concerning when you see another jet like right next to you. And we're about to go into the clouds. Just saying. They can see each other though, right? Hey. Thank you. Hi. The pilots may have had a wager. We can get to that runway first. I see. Oh well. We'll see. cloud. We're in the fog in Los Angeles. I guess that's, what do they call it, the June gloom in March. I thought we were a lot higher. Good morning, up. everyone. JetBlue Airways welcomes you to Los Angeles International Airport. The local time is approximately 17 minutes before 10 o'clock. For your safety as we taxi, please stay seated. 10 o'clock fog. Until we are parked at the gate and the seatbelt sign that was has a been turned off. Abrupt. Just kind of a lengthy taxi here in LA due to traffic. We do make many uh, stops and starts. Just keep your eye on that pass and see about sign up once that's out. You're free to move about the cabin. When that happens, do be careful opening overhead vents as items may have shifted during the flight. If you have checked bags this morning, you can move downstairs to carousel number two. On behalf of all I'd of us, say we stopped just in time. Boston-based crew, we'd like to thank you for flying this today. If you live in Southern California, welcome home. If you're here for a visit, we certainly hope you enjoy your stay. All right, it's foggy. <laughs> We're okay. Everything's okay so far, anyway. It's all good. <laughs> we got the spirit right next to us, just like when we took off from Logan. <laughs> kind of funny. Watch Top Gun and Jurassic, which was really fitting for flying across the country. You never know where you're gonna make new friends. Hey, I'm Tim from Cape Cod. What's your name, where are you from? Uh, Brian Hamill from East Hampton, Connecticut. And where are we now? We are in LAX, <laughs> waiting for our flight to Reno to make, hopefully, get to Palisades, Tahoe, and get some skiing in. We'll see. <laughs> so you're going to Palisades? Palisades, yeah. Formerly known as Squaw. From, formerly known as Squaw. Don't say that too loud. Some people <laughs> might get mad. <laughs> yeah, we're headed uh, towards Tahoe also. Think yep. we're going to make it? How's the weather I, up there? I mean, I think we're going to make it in. We'll see what happens Monday or Tuesday. So All my right. girlfriend's there right now. Did three hours, and she was done. Great so. to meet you, Brian. Yeah, awesome to meet you, All so. right. Finally taking off from Los Angeles about two hours late. Interesting fog bank down there, huh? Hoping to be in place to watch the end of the players, but well, nice 
nice view from up here too. I think those are the foothills that just got the rain in Los Angeles. Still just a little bit of snow left up on top. Great news, breaking the weather. You can see the mountains, you can see the sun. Should be an okay ride from Reno to Tahoe, based on this. On second thought, Tahoe's on the other side of the plane, so I'm looking towards Nevada. Can't see what's going on on the other side. So we're on the east side of the ridges. A lot of brown water, that river looks pretty high. Hard to tell from up here, which is a problem. Always pretty though. Looks like maybe some railroad tracks. All right, something coming out of the sky over there. I'm guessing it's rain. Nevada. From now on, every time I think of Nevada, I think of Nevada Alba. It means snowy mountain. Right, Nevada? Alba? But well, good, there's a radar tracking the snow over to the side of Mount, the side of Mount Rose. Winter storm warning in effect. Let's see how much the weather changes on the other side when we get to California. Little rain, little snow, 37 degrees. So far, so good. Trucky, California. Well, that was good timing. We just pulled in and just started snowing. It was like raining on the ride. Cool. That's cool. I think that's our room up there. All right, so that's not exactly snow that they're blowing there. That's slush. And I just found out that the resort was not open today. Two days in a row, three days in a row now. Maybe tomorrow.